In the words of Joseph Stalin, trust no one, not even yourself. In cartels and mafia, treason is punishable by death. But when your life is on the line, even your most trusted soldiers can turn against you. This is the story of Chicago twins Jay and Peter Flores, who were once among Mexico drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's most trusted allies, living lavish lifestyles of excess and extravagance until they made the fateful decision to turn against the cartel boss. Not only did they get their sentences shortened, but they also had millions of dollars stacked waiting for them on the outside. So how did they fool the drug kingpin, the FBI, and the police at the same time? Stick around until the end to know about the masterminds who sank El Chapo. Seven years have passed since a federal judge in Chicago rewarded two of the most significant drug informants in United States history with relatively light 14-year prison sentences. That was in exchange for their extraordinary cooperation against Sinaloa cartel kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. We are all familiar with that name, but not many know about the Flores brothers, who had a massive role in running El Chapo's cartel and making him a kingpin. From the very start, Pedro and Margarito Flores led an unusual childhood, growing up in the Chicago neighborhood of Little Village with their father, a high-ranking wholesale cocaine dealer, the identical twin brothers were normalized to the world of drug crime from a young age. Initially, they followed in their father's footsteps, running drugs with the Latin Kings gang. And yet, the brothers combined characters and unwavering commitment to each other endeared them to a host of unscrupulous characters. Uniquely able to connect previously disparate Hispanic and black gangs, the brothers rose quickly through the street gangs, eventually becoming two of the USA's biggest wholesalers of cocaine and heroin. It was all business for the Flores twins. The brothers were seen as CEOs of the street, with the integrity to match, much like Stringer Bell. Many attribute their success to the brothers' steadfast relationship and the rare underworld values they shared, values such as restraint and loyalty that would later become iconic of their demeanor. When Pedro was kidnapped in 2003, Margarito immediately paid the full $2 million ransom, absorbing the cost, rather than seeking to strike back. Even when presented with the kidnapper on a platter, the brothers turned the other cheek, choosing to focus on growing their business rather than engaging in gang warfare. You don't hear such stories about dealers on the street, but the Flores brothers weren't just any other drug dealers. They also had another older brother, Armando Flores. The twins were just 16 when Armando was arrested in the late 1990s for selling narcotics out of a Cicero auto dealership. Armando was later sentenced to five years in federal prison, and his absence created a vacuum for his younger brothers to fill. Within a few years, the twins had risen to the highest levels of Chicago's drug trafficking underworld. Their position as major distributors for Mexico's notorious Sinaloa cartel made them fantastically rich, and ultimately provided a direct pipeline to the boss himself, El Chapo. This was thanks to their father's contacts in Mexico. At the same time, their father, Margarito Flores Sr., was convicted of trafficking drugs from Mexico to the United States. In 2009, he did not heed the advice of his sons and federal authorities and traveled to Mexico. His vehicle was found in the Sinaloa Desert with a note on the windshield warning his sons to keep quiet or you're next. Margarito Flores Sr. is now presumed dead. In 2008, a split within the cartel forced the twins into a choice between two new factions. Having previously worked with both sides and with the two new leaders locked in vicious opposition, entering into business with one would undoubtedly result in repercussions from the other. Faced with a clear lose-lose situation, the brothers made a surprising choice. They flipped, turning their back on their heritage and strong ties within the global narcotic industry, and came forward to Chicago police in hopes of a plea bargain. The Flores twins' decision to cooperate with federal authorities in 2008 led to arguably the biggest drug case ever brought in Chicago, with charges against El Chapo as well as many of his top underbosses. A federal judge told the Flores twins at their 2015 sentencing that they would always have to worry about being hunted down by cartel hitmen after their decision to cooperate with prosecutors against El Chapo. Pedro Flores even testified against Guzman at his trial in New York in 2008. 
with estimates of maneuvering over 71 tons of cocaine and nearly 2 billion US dollars in cash, the brothers represented a considerable coup for the police force, but their connections to El Chapo himself held an even bigger bounty. In a bold move, the brothers agreed to wear wires and proceeded to record over 70 different conversations with El Chapo and his highest ranking members over the following months. Guzman initially managed to escape prosecution by breaking out of a Mexican prison before he was recaptured and extradited to the United States to stand trial. The brothers, along with 12 other cooperating witnesses, would testify against him in the 2019 trial that led to his conviction on multiple counts against him, including drug trafficking, firearms charges, and engaging in a continual criminal enterprise. He was sentenced to life in prison. The Flores brothers' spouses, Mia and Olivia Flores, described having had access to unimaginable wealth during their stay in Mexico. The siblings' annual income in the mid-2000s was estimated to be $700 million. Court documents revealed how they would shrink-wrap the cash with food saver machines and hide them inside the homes of their loved ones throughout Chicago and its suburbs. We have to say, that's pretty smart. For the sake of perspective, the Flores operation in Chicago was one of the largest drug busts in U.S. history. When it was broken apart in 2008, the wholesale price for kilos of cocaine shot up from $18,000 to $29,000 overnight as their absence caused an immediate drought in the scene. In 2015, the brothers received just 14 years of prison sentencing in exchange for all their help. You would expect the brothers to have changed after taking such a huge U-turn, but there's more to the story. Their sentence was shortened even further, and they were released from prison in 2020 into a witness protection program. In 2021, the brother's story made headlines again. Remember the older brother Armando Flores? Now 53, he recently pleaded guilty to money laundering charges alleging he helped collect millions of dollars in drug proceeds and other assets in Mexico and the United States after the brothers had agreed to cooperate with authorities and bury the cash. Where? You must be thinking. Well, under his back porch in Texas. Yes, you heard that right. Armando Flores hid about $300,000 in a trailer he took across the border, and in early 2009, he collected another $760,000 in drug cash from associates of the twins in Los Angeles. Later, Armando Flores arranged to collect debt from the twins' customers. One pickup was for $2.9 million, and another for $1.9 million. Over the ensuing years, Armando Flores participated in a scheme to disperse the money to the twins' wives, Viviana Lopez and Valerie Gaetan, without the knowledge of federal investigators. The brothers and wives laundered millions of dollars over the years through lavish trips, luxury items, and a lot more. Armando Flores admitted in the plea that he participated in the conspiracy in exchange for a cut of all the money he delivered. He faces up to about 20 years in prison under federal sentencing guidelines. But if he continues to cooperate, federal prosecutors said they intend to ask the judge for a significant break. Prosecutors are seeking a $504,858 judgment against the twins' wives, who are accused, along with other family members, of hiding and spending the twins' drug money. Authorities have said the wives spent it on trips to Europe, the Caribbean, and Las Vegas, private schools for their kids, and an exercise bike. Yes, an exercise bike. The FBI is ruthless in its pursuit. While an unusual turn of events by any measure, the Flores wives say it is among the proof they were given immunity years ago and shouldn't be prosecuted now. What do you think? That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Could the FBI have caught El Chapo without the help of his brothers? And do you think they have money hidden? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and also share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel, The Crime Analyst, so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.